Hey guys, welcome to Restless Outdoors. So I'm out here today doing a quick day hike. Beautiful, beautiful kind of winter day. Uh, it is brisk because it is snowing, uh, but it's uh, it's awesome. So I was just tagged by a pretty awesome channel, Adam Z Adventures. You guys, make sure you go check him out. He does a lot of camping, RV camping, backpacking, uh, car camping, you name it. Uh, really good channel, really good guy. And this tag that's been going around, it's been pretty interesting. It's about 11 questions and once I read the questions, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be a fun video to make. So without further ado, let's go with the questioning. And uh, I'm going to find Lucas. Uh, I guess he kind of disappeared on me, but hold on while I go try to find him. So first question on the list is, do you prefer to go on a trip alone or with a group? That's an excellent question. Now, typically, I love going camping and backpacking with a ton of people. To me, it's just the camaraderie, uh, the good times that you have, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, the stories and just, you know, I, I, you name it. But with the addition of Lucas to our family, come here, buddy, come here, come here. There you go. Oh, say, hi to, say hi to Lucas, guys. Oh my gosh, he is a crazy boy. Uh, he is almost eight months now and he's grown quite a bit i know buddy the cool thing about lucas is when i do want to go alone i'm really not alone because i will be having some company with me so i'm very very excited about that uh, he's proven to be uh, an amazing dog on the trail so we're gonna be doing an overnight hopefully very soon uh, and it's just gonna be uh, uh, lucas and i i don't want any distractions as far as you know other people and stuff like that. I just want to kind of spend some quality time and kind of teach them some things. Let's talk about how to poop in the woods. But nonetheless, the answer to that question, I love going with the group. I tried going camping uh, or backpacking one time and I enjoyed myself, uh, but it was uh, somewhat of a disaster. <sighs> Nothing that was too crazy, just a bunch of ticks, but. Other than that, I wish I would have, you know, had someone there to uh, kind of share uh, the adventure with. But so the answer to the question, yes, I'd love to go backpacking with a, a group of people. I think it's just uh, uh, altogether a lot more fun. Okay, so second question. What has been the most challenging trip or hike to date? That's a very simple one. That was the Laurel Highlands trip that Tim and Goat and I did uh, almost a year ago, uh, back in May. And I've never encountered any type of mileage like that I was super excited knew it was gonna be pretty tough and without a doubt were we prepared absolutely uh, the only issue that I had on that trip was buying new shoes and let me tell you that put a damper on that trip because within the first I don't know mile or two miles I started developing blisters for the five days, they just grew all over my foot because I would literally try to walk and compensate for a blister and then another blister would form. So it was pretty tough. Um, in addition to that, with having all those blisters and walking kind of goofy, I put a lot of strain on my knees to the point where my knees, literally for two weeks after the trip, were in excruciating pain. Never had knee pain like that. Never really experienced knee pain anytime I went backpacking. But that right there was, it was a challenge just because I was hurting. But would do that trip all over again. Loved it. I actually probably want to do it in the next couple years and do it the opposite way that we did. So, okay guys, moving on. Number three, what is the most beautiful sleeping place so far? I'd have to say hands down, it was Minister Creek in Pennsylvania. Holy cow, we still talk about it to this day. All other campsites always measure up to this campsite, at least to me. It was unbelievable. We essentially slept on an island where all these converging creeks were. The sounds of the water, the fall colors, it was just truly picturesque. The weather was phenomenal. Uh, just everything about that trip was just, again, I measure up all my backpacking trips uh, and campsites when we go backpacking to this Minister Creek. Now, we've been to some amazing places, but that one really 
sticks out the most. So if you're ever in that area, you've got to go to Minister Creek. You'll know when you get there. That's all I can say. Snow on the camera. Question number four. What winter activities do you enjoy? Well, funny, because I just picked up snowshoeing uh, for the first time this, uh, this winter and love it, love it a lot. The fact that you can really go hiking in, you know, pretty heavy, deep snow, not where we live in Ohio, we get snow and we haven't had a lot of like crazy, crazy snows, um, much of significant accumulation. Uh, we've had a few, maybe six inches, seven inches, and putting on those snowshoes and going out hiking, uh, we would do it at nighttime, just amazing. Uh, that's kind of a new activity that uh, we started doing that I really, really, uh, truly love. But unfortunately, uh, living where I live, it's kind of few and far between where we can go. We have to travel outside uh, to get deeper snow. But uh, snowshoeing is fantastic. Love it to death. Uh, so, and unfortunately, winter's almost over. But uh, the few times that I went, really enjoyed it. So. How old is this dog at? <whistles> Lucas! Okay, number five. Have you ever been seriously hurt in the outdoors? Other than, again, getting back to that Laura Highlands trip and having all those blisters and the excruciating knee pain, thank God, no. The answer is no. I have not been seriously hurt, and I uh, plan to keep it that way. Okay, guys, number six. Do you practice any special survival techniques? I can't say that I do. <laughs> I'm just like your average, uh, you know, uh, just enjoy the outdoors, backpacking, you know. Uh, no, I don't have any that come to mind. I guess survive and not get hurt and not die while I'm out there. Okay. Okay, number seven. What do you think about a permanent bushcraft camp? I personally don't bushcraft camp. I think it's great. Uh, I... I, I, as a kid, I guess I would build stuff, you know, make stuff in trees, and uh, I just don't do that now. I, not that I don't have a desire to, I just don't have any place to do it around here. But along the same lines, we have a place that we go to. It's on the Ohio uh, PA border called Pymatuma State Park. There is a, uh, a site that we always, always get. I would love to set up a permanent residence there. Uh, I know I could live there forever. Uh, although I wouldn't make uh, a shelter out of, you know, sticks and twigs and stuff. I, maybe uh, some type of, like, log cabin, uh, you know, if they allowed it, would be, uh, I mean, amazing. I, I'd live there for the rest of my life. Uh, that place uh, uh, holds uh, uh, very true and dear uh, to my heart. So, Number eight, what's your favorite recipe for cooking outdoors? I'm not a picky eater. I, uh, you know, typically when I backpack, I just, you know, I kind of go with my standby meals, uh, which are... Typically mountain house meals, uh, ramen, uh, you know, but the most important <laughs> backpacking meal, if you want to call it, would be my coffee. <laughs> I got to have coffee. Uh, that is, I bring a stupid amount of coffee with me when I go backpacking. I can live off of coffee. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I, it doesn't get me going all jittery inside. I just love the taste of it, uh, especially being outside. Uh, you know, I don't know how much calories coffee has but not enough to sustain you while you're backpacking but uh, that's probably one of my favorite items to bring but food wise I, I eat anything I mean it's you know I'm a pig number nine how do you motivate yourself in bad weather this is actually something that uh, I'll be a hundred percent honest when we plan a trip there's always a plan a a plan B and sometimes a plan C and sometimes a plan D we look at the weather and obviously if, if we're going somewhere um, and the weather's going to be just rainy and just soaking wet, we will at all costs try to avoid that. Uh, the, and again, there, there comes into play plan B and plan C. We always pick different backup places uh, to go backpacking and, and check the weather. Uh, never in the same state. You know, usually we kind of you know, look in West Virginia or, or Pennsylvania or Michigan, whatever. And then we'll see kind of like how the weather unfolds in those areas. And then, you know, we'll kind of make a beeline. But let's be honest, you know, when you go backpacking, you, you just don't, whatever the weather says, it's not always 100% correct. So it's about a 50-50 chance. But 
really, you know, when it rains out there and it's bad weather, you know, I like it. I love thunderstorms. So to me, you know, to get caught in a thunderstorm, you know, a lot of people get scared and, you know, we've been caught in thunderstorms and I enjoy them. Uh, there is a danger aspect, obviously, with, you know, lightning and falling trees and stuff, but I don't really think about that. To me, uh, it, it's, you know, definitely part of the adventure. So, you know, bad weather is going to happen regardless. It could be, you know, a bright and sunny, and then an hour later, you can have 60 mile an hour uh, winds and a tornado and all that. I mean, it, that's just the reality of being out, outdoors, I guess. So it doesn't really, you know, affect uh, the way... Uh, I enjoy myself, but yeah, uh, to be honest, yeah, if there's a way we can avoid it, yeah, of course I'm going to avoid it. I mean, you know, who wants to be wet and soggy and cold? Not me. Okay, guys, we're winding down here to question number 10. What would be your dream destination? Montana. Yeah. Okay. And finally, guys, the final question, what is the heaviest piece of equipment? That is very simple. That is the camera that I carry with me. As a matter of fact, uh, this is it right here. Uh, this is my uh, Sony uh, A6000. This is the camera that I usually take with me on backpacking trips. This thing is a beast. Uh, I ended up putting a cage on here uh, so I can put accessories like, uh, you know, I have a, uh, a light that... There we go. That now I can uh, illuminate uh, the, let's see if I can get the battery in here. This thing is super bright. There we go. There we go. I mean, bam. This thing is like crazy, crazy bright. If you guys can see me. So that is by far, along with, you know, I got to carry... Uh, uh, battery bank for all my batteries and my chargers. I have to take lenses with me. I have to take the microphone with me. I mean, so that's why I actually bought this thing. Now, you're wondering, well, if that's your camera, what are you filming on? So I just recently picked up a new camera. It's not a new camera. It's an older camera, but it's one that has a, uh, a hot shoe. And one thing about a smaller camera, there's really no mic inputs. Uh, so that really, uh, to me, not having a mic or, or mic in yourself takes away from the quality of the video. So this camera, it's the, the Sony RX100 Mark II. It's the only one they make with a hot shoe. I think they made it around the same time they, they put this one out, the uh, A6000. Uh, and so that's what I'm shooting on right now. So this may be going away. Uh, I may be getting rid of this. Uh, I guess we'll see what uh, the quality of this camera is. This is an awesome camera, and I love this camera. But to take a backpack with me every time, it's just a beast. It is a beast. I mean, this thing, I don't even know what this thing weighs. It weighs a ton, uh, and it is by far the heaviest thing that I take with me. Um, now, obviously, it's it's worth it because I think the quality of the video is, is phenomenal. But at the same time... I, it limits me to when I'm backpacking and, you know, I'm always carrying the camera. Uh, again, I love it, but it's, I think it's time to make a change, but we'll see. You guys let me know in the comment section how this video looks and tell me, hey, is this camera that, that we're shooting on here, uh, uh, you know, is, is it at least decent quality? I know it's not going to be this, but hopefully it's at least decent. So, okay, guys, that wraps it up. I hope you enjoy these 11 questions that were posed to me uh, by Adam Z Adventures. Again, go check out his channel. Now it's my turn to pick three additional channels. So the three channels I'm going to pick, first up is Devin from Backcountry Exposure. Love Devin's channel. I've been watching him for a long time. He puts out amazing stuff. I think now he's turned into a professional seamstress. The stuff he's making is just, it's, it's out of this world. The second channel I'm going to tag is Corbin from the Wasatch Gear Review. Corbin, I've been watching his channel for a while. He's from Utah. Amazing, amazing videos he puts out. Go check him out. Stunning, stunning scenery. Uh, just very enjoyable to watch. And speaking of stunning scenery, the third channel I'm going to tag is Catherine Gregory. Her videos and where she goes, holy cow, I, 
I'm speechless. I mean, Catherine, I'm so jealous of where you live, and I'm so jealous of the places that you're able to uh, to visit. I mean, truly once in a lifetime places that, and it's in your backyard. So I I love your videos, and I would love to hear uh, your uh, eleven answers to these uh, uh, questions. So guys, I appreciate it as always. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you later.